me through it. Well, we've got an uh, interesting world at the moment. In uh, regards, sorry to interrupt you, but in regards to what Trump is saying and what, yeah, yeah. How, how you feel about what... Uh, I mean, I think he's right. I think um, <clears throat> when Trump was in power, I think he was perceived to be very unpredictable. Uh, I don't think he was unpredictable. I think he was perceived to be so. And certainly when I was dealing with Chinese and Russian academics, they would say to me, look, we knew how to play Bush, uh, Clinton and Obama. How do you play uh, Trump? And I said, look, you can't. He, he's not your sort of textbook politician. He, he has an instinctive approach to these things. And a lot of his intuition was very good. And I think once one gets over the fact that his thumbs and his mouth tend to get detached from his brain occasionally, uh, he actually has some good ideas. They are sound. And when he says Putin wouldn't have invaded Ukraine on his watch, I think he's right. I think he's right. As a leader of men, which you... And women. And women. Yeah. But, you know, I, I use the, ro the royal we of yep. men. But as a leader of men and women, um, do you need amongst the ranks that sort of impetuosity, that sort of... Dionysian anti-hero. You know, do you need those characters to 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 motivate troops and 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 the like? You need a mixture, Lawrence. You need uh, what I call regulators, those who are basically authoritarian in organisation, and you need rat catchers, uh, those people who use their initiative, those people who are prepared to uh, display dissent and do the right thing when they see the circumstances change. Um, that's the Nelson touch in the Navy, uh, the ability to say, look, uh, I see the signal to withdraw, but you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm winning this battle. Um, of course, we encourage that. I'm afraid in peacetime, that sort of behaviour is discouraged and you're never going to make it to the top in peacetime. But in wartime, those people are good. You need to protect them in peacetime so they're available to you. Otherwise, you, you're running a war, by, uh, really, by military bureaucrats. And this is what Russia's finding. The sort of people that were slavishly um, uh, subordinate to uh, the politicians and the mafia groups that run Russia don't know how to run a war, and that's why they're losing. Added to the fact, of course, the Ukrainians are prepared to die for their country, but the Russians aren't prepared to die for Ukraine. Absolutely. And finally, on this idea of deterrence, is it, how, how crucial is it in the, in the theatre of war? Well, if you get your deterrence right, you won't have to go to war. Um, and the basic uh, principle is uh, your opponent has got to believe uh, that the disadvantages outweigh the benefits of using violence. And deterrence failed totally with regard to Ukraine because the West has had a strategy of wishful thinking. Uh, that is not a strategy. I'm afraid that is appeasement and that is a short route to war because, as the Israelis will tell you, Weakness, whether political or military, is a provocation to the bad guys in the world. Chris Parry, ladies and gentlemen, sensible. Thank heavens. Right.